thank you for coming. I know th today is relatively important in terms of you know discussing everything in terms of governance and the proposals and what we will do as a team and how we will move forward. Um, you know, we have been discussing this internally, so many of us have showed up, you know, to just give you an insight of what's been happening more. It seems that we have been facing issues with not being able to communicate properly everything that's been happening to you, and we understand the frustration coming out of you because um, the communication definitely needs to be um, better. So just give me a moment uh, to check some things. Michael, uh, would you like to say anything first before we go into the meeting, or is that something you want to say for later on? No, I can give you, I can get it started and give you a feedback on our experience in it, Lisbon, or Liscon, for that matter. Can you guys hear me? Okay, I would assume that yeah, you guys yeah, do. Yeah, and yeah, Liscon was interesting again, where quite a lot of the projects that we met and one of the main aim for us as a team was to go and meet the various projects that are out there and a lot of them again are into nfts and DeFi, and at least in my case quite a lot of the people i've spoken to either they have a new DeFi project or the developers playing around with some um, NFT creative ways of monetizing it, DeFi um, breeding with NFT. Um, quite a lot of those I have met and discussed with. And also, one or two conversations where the scaling of Ethereum came up and people discussed, mentioned various other alternative blockchains, especially in the NFT space, such as Tezos, Flow, and, and Nier as well, for what it brings to the space. And the fact that there was a Nier cone right after the list cone could probably be the case. And it was interesting to converse with a, an NFT well, and who was so keen on having the meme swap decentralized the the uniswap of nfts we had created an experiment with, with for that to be on tezos etc but obviously tezos not being evm compatible is a different matter and one of the other reasons why we wanted to go there was obviously to push it spot to any businesses that would find it useful and beneficial then we met with a couple of people that showed interest and we're engaging with them. But more than that, there was a collaboration that we had been working with for the past couple of months with Collabland. And for those of you who do not know Collabland, they have a mechanism on Discord channels where they can gate they can create gated rooms say an example a typical example is on our discord channel the governance room is gated by the collabland bots and their implementation and they have access to over a million users in, from various discord channels and one of the things that uh, exists right now is NFT projects rely heavily on Discord and then they use quite a lot of quite a lot of them use Collabland. And however, and no, before I go to the issue with that, there, there are over five thousand Discord crypto Discord channels around. So the thesis that Collabland presented to us is in which we agree with them is how do we get the next 100 million users into the crypto space the next 100 million users are not going to be crypto savvy they're going to be normies newbie users of crypto so what challenges do we face and how do we get them the thesis is we target communities crypto communities on discord as they are doing 
with 5,000, um, over 5,000 communities around with gamers, artists, collectible promotions. And as an example, NBA Top Shots, they use Discord channel as well. And that is managed by Collabland. In fact, Collabland recently, well, uh, two weeks ago, signed a deal with Fox Network in regards to the TV show Masked Celebrity and in view of dropping, airdropping NFTs on the normal user base that watches that TV program. So what is the problem then? The problem lies with usability. With over 5,000 Discord groups on crypto, uh, the crypto groups on Discord, with each having six to 8,000 members, and Clubland having managed over 1 million of them, they only have 10% of those with token engagement or token activation. Still, the, using a wallet, whether it is MetaMask, which is heavily used, or wallet apps, they're alien to the normal user. They need education, which people have less time for. Whether it's knowing about gas price, or whether, or it is knowing which network to go to, Polygon, or is it Ethereum, or is it XDAI? As a user, when I use Twitter, I do not care whether Twitter uses GraphQL, SQL Server, or any other database. It's not my business. That's not what I'm paid to do. I just use it because it is a platform that is usable to me. The same goes with wallets. Unless we make them usable and very, very easy to use. And in this case, them coming in baked into the communication channels we use, it is hard a bit, a bit to, to attract the normal users. And the solution for us is this collaboration. Collaboration with um, Collabland. Collabland is a company that was that a, 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 a product of Abridged, and Abridged has a long story with us. Um, we collaborated with them when we created the PPN and the PPN led to Ethersport. Now, the solution here lies by integrating the Collabland bots with Ethersport. How this works is we have a user which who is in a certain Discord channel and this user will get a DM from uh, when they connect to, to, to that Collabland server, if they have a promotion, they'll get a DM from that Discord server with a link for them to log in. When they log in, with, so that they can claim the airdrop and assume this user does not have a wallet. So they go to this link and it gives them a dialogue box. In this case, at the moment, it uses um, um, Taurus based email login so that as soon as you log in with an email or Facebook account or anything with the Taurus access, you immediately get an Ethersport wallet created for you. Why do we need the Ethersport wallet? The reason is because it is a smart contract wallet that allows you to effectively have a multi sig like behavior. You can have multiple accounts. As soon as this Ethersport wallet is created, then the collab land bot is added. Obviously, the user is asked for permission. Now, by clicking yes, the user can delegate transfers and all the nitty gritty details of moving one asset to from one place to another to the bot. So they type, the user can just type into the chat box say slash mint. The bot mints an airdrop, a token and airdrops it and they can type in slash send token to Polygon OpenSea in the chat box. And the Collabland bot does it on their behalf. 
this is progressive decentralization. Yes, the user will be having a, 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 joint, a joint custodial wallet in here, but a normal user, the first port of call, we give them the option. As they learn, they can go into the configuration and say, okay, I no longer want the bot to have a joint custody of my wallet. Or they can set up and create another sub account so that they can leave this one for convenience. Just as much as when we use our contactless cards, there is a security risk where someone can scan it, but it has a spending limit and we use it on a daily basis. So the user can use this specific account for that and have other accounts for other reasons. This is um, our day one sort of product release it would be with them, but there would be a lot more features to be added in, including the payment channel services that we will be hoping to utilize with them. And as such, they had a demo, uh, Collabland de developer Caleb had a demo in Nearcon showcasing this and unfortunately i have been told i cannot play it for you guys within within um, the stages in discord so we will post the link um if you can dennis if you can post the link then yeah, of that would be um, yeah unfortunately so, the stages don't support uh, screen sharing as of now that's really unfortunate for us we would like to share it with you in lifetime but we can't do that so i'll share that inside the general channel you know for everyone to check it out um now or later i don't know michael would you like them to check it out right now or should we just leave it on for later on as a coin i mean if it was up to me i would have played it but you can check it in your own time you can just post it in discord or wherever it is accessible to people obviously those people on youtube I don't know how we can post it. Oh, you can you can post it in the comment section in YouTube as well, I suppose. Yeah, actually, Pablo uh, had some issues regarding YouTube, so we're Discord only for today. Um, I'm not sure if you've seen the message, yes. but basically we're Discord only for today. Unfortunately, that's also something. I'll share it here, so everyone you know who has who's going to view the video later on, I'm having this recorded right now. So in case anyone is late to the meeting or has a different time zone, something like that. The meeting will be on YouTube as always, so everyone who's been missing it can always check back on it as always. Cool. I mean, that is pretty much in terms of the real tangible product update in, in terms of it is what There are a couple of other collaborations we're working on, but we will go into them when they develop and have we have something tangible with them. And that's for me for this section. Thank you. Michael, do you want to add on how uh, we were, I mean, Pillar and Spot as such was received in LISCON or ETH list? Of course. Of course. Um, yeah, th 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 that was actually a good one. Thanks for reminding me. When most of the time we were discussing and telling people the storyline I've just told you about both automation and I would say at least 99.9% .9 of the people that I spoke to were very excited. Some of them, their jaws dropped when I told them just the simplicity of the wallets coming near, your, near you in the communication that you use. So that was taken up very well, simplicity. And I was following, I was attending a virtual NFT event yesterday. And this was the issue that was being raised when people are brought into the NFT space. The nitty gritty of a wallet, transaction fees, browser plugin, downloads, they were barriers to entry. And this seems to have gone down very well. And it is up to us to just make sure that we are on top of it and productionize this implementation which was demoed recently so in terms of acceptance it was overwhelmingly accepted by anyone he spoke to any other thing I've forgotten Partha or anyone else 
get to that from from my from my end um, as I've been there with Michael and I've had also similar conversations. Um, we're having a lot of thoughts after you know yet another conference in which after talking about pillar wallet and you know our our mobile smart contract wallet we're kind of you know getting a, a courtesy nod from people that are working in the industry and we are when and whenever we're starting to talk about etherspot and what it unlocks especially in such specific use case and very needed use case that is demonstrated in collaborant collaboration we're getting much more interest and much more willingness to collaborate and much more willingness to build on top or using Etherspot. Um, that's that's you know another another event in the road. That's another community meeting in which we're getting such feedback and in which from which we're coming with with those conclusions. Um, so in in all the conversations that we're having in the governor's house about finding strategies that will work well for our community that will turn the ship around onto the higher tides. This has to be seriously considered and it's something on top of our mind really. How we can leverage Etherspot the most and how we can um, keep going that direction, direction in which is making industry interested or excited about what we're doing and what our tech unlocks. So that's that's just an addition for me to make it quite clear for you what are what is our feedback and what are our feelings after yet another conference. Uh, thank, thanks in that regard. So um, I guess we'll continue the usual format unless anyone from the team has anything to say about that. Um, Kieran, are you with us today? Uh, I am, yeah, just just about. Okay, okay. So you don't mind sharing what's been happening for the last two weeks, basically, just we as we always covered. We have time for discussion later on, but um, just to do the usual format of things, you know, how how are uh, the things inside the app doing? Uh, what we have, uh, how we um, change anything from the last two weeks now? Yeah. So, so I'm on vacation, so I'm not. I don't. I don't know what's been going on day to day. Um, with the wallet, but as far as I'm concerned, um, what I left the team with, it was business as usual. And when I say business as usual, the things that we're sorting out the most are um, obviously burning bugs, but also we're rewiring and redesigning and re-implementing um, the whole onboarding process, which is um, a pain for most people. So um, this is the, these, are, these are the main things that are happening um, inside the and um, <clears throat> just in regards to uh, LizCon um, as well, uh, you know, my, my um, I, you know, my, what what Yasik said, I basically echo that. You know, that there's there's a lot of hype around Etherspot and its capabilities, like Etherspot being the key sort of the key technology, the key part of the technology stack here. You know, and I, I said to both Michael and Yasik separately just talking to them I was just like you know it's a that you know the attention is turning towards Etherspot you know so so um so this is this is quite interesting um and, and it's something that's at the top of my mind as it's with, with all of us really on the team so um so, so just interesting to watch out for that um in terms of the things um you know I, I managed to speak to Pedro as well from Wallet Connect um, and we devised a plan as well to um, uh, to to improve Wallet Connect, not just for ourselves but for everyone. Uh, this involves transplanting transplanting a different transport mechanism um, uh, into the the Wallet Connect system, which we're going to trial um, probably in a couple of weeks' time. Uh, as soon as we get some class to do, to do so. So um, so that's a bit of news from my side. And there's a couple of things as well, but we'll announce that further down the pipeline. Uh, and that's it for me. Yeah, I think, Kieran, uh, for sharing that. So, um, yeah, the next order of things would be what's been happening on the marketing side. Uh, Yatsik, would you like to share before we go on to the actual discussion at hand we have? 
for this week? Sure. Um, this, it's been quite a busy week. Uh, busy with all kinds of events, networking, um, meetings, and everything that went down in Lisbon. It has been a uh, another great week for for the whole community, I believe. Um, we've had a great time meeting some some friends from the industry, but also partners, uh, getting things done as well. Just you know, repeating what what. Uh, what Kieran said about our wallet connect or, or, you know, just reiterating what Michael has been mostly involved in, in, in the collab land stuff, but also opening many other new conversations, as I've mentioned, hundred percent of them around ether spot. Um, so that's, that's, I guess the main takeaway from, from this, uh, event side and also something that, you know, now will be discussed on a business on a strategy level because it's it looks like a it looks like a great opportunity um on other things uh, we've been discussing in the community quite a lot about uh you know the failure of the so-called failure of Mazix uh engagement um i just wanted to reiterate that this is something that we feel as well, and we are also not happy and not satisfied by how this engagement went down. And uh, we are in the process of changing the structure and the approach to, to the marketing team. So after my little part, I'll, I'll give a mic to Kyle, who is our first new team member, uh, who is coming as a growth lead and who already engaged with some of you in discussions in Discord. Uh, which I'm thankful for and which is the way forward. Um, and that's first of, I would say, several. Um, I've been I've been already close to fin finalize the deal with the social media manager. Unfortunately, the, the chosen manager didn't decide to take the, to formalize this offer. So uh, we, we need to take a step back and, and consider on the other candidates now. But nonetheless, this process, as well as content lead hire, um, are are now on t on the top of my list and are something that we're actively working on by approaching different communities, looking for uh, uh, posting uh, ads on on different job sites, as well as engaging in some communities and uh, engaging also recruiters that potentially can help us with finding right people. Um, this is this is something that we believe will bring more value to our marketing. Uh, we can already just like looking at, at Kyle's case, see how much more can be done if there's one person dedicated just for us every day full time, instead of having the member of the marketing agency who obviously have more clients and and more things on on their plate than than what we've had. So, yes, we are we're in agreement. This experiment didn't work out, and we're taking necessary steps to, as soon as possible, be able to have as much capacity as we've had during the Amazix engagement, because this is what has been done and what helped us during the launch, but didn't convert into into bigger results. I hope that with that mission going we we can have your support and as you've welcomed kyle to the team and to the community you will be also welcoming other new hires that are going to join us um finally we've also signed some deals with influencers um this is really uh, in line with what michael discussed a couple weeks ago uh so basically coming up with a list of uh, influencers to to try out to do one off and then use those who presented us in the best way who um, made those make made the the impact coming from their content really visible uh, we have three deals finalized there should be a video coming within a week from the first influencer and then two other guys should be also uh, posting stuff pretty quickly after him. 
Um, this is a matter probably of one, two weeks. I would hope that it will be a matter of another week after this content is posted to analyze it, to basically validate the idea of having a more long-term collaboration with those influencers and then uh, start using them in a more uh, active manner. One key thing that I wanted to highlight this is that we also want to make sure that we're hyping or promoting the right aspects. So we're all here, obviously, interested in token appreciation, in, in token being more recognized and, and demanded more. Um, but there are, there are several you know, things in the works which can make this hype a little bit more grounded in reality, like staking, improved utility. I believe this is, this is something that we probably want to have first before we start go and promoting the token quite explicitly. But there is Etherspot and there is quite a lot of stuff that's happening, not only within Collabland collaboration. So that looks like a great topic and a great material to get a bit of this hype and get influencers to rally around our SDK and help us translate the value and the power of this SDK to their audiences and their networks. So you can expect that some of these videos will be still focused around Pillar Wallet, which is a great gate to get some more um, newbie or less technical viewer to get excited about Pillar. But at least the other half of them will be about Etherspot because this is where we see a lot of potential and this is where we kind of formulate uh, the new messaging that can take us to places where, where we haven't been recognized or where people weren't aware of us. I guess this will be three top things from me. Um, obviously, open to all questions. Yeah, thank, thank you, Jack. Um, so a couple of things to discuss. Um, I just wanted to first mention the things that we as a team are proposing that we do. And the first would be API staking, which I believe part of will cover partially. And then there's the still ongoing airdrop campaign that I have been finalizing, uh, doing some background work. Um, I'll just update in the forum uh, one or two days from now. There has been major changes to the actual paper, but I haven't updated it publicly, so you can't see it yet. But I'm sure you know that we have Firebird Finance on board as well as uh, Polygon and this is a huge thing and I'm sure many of you will be excited to understand how big of a scale can this um, you know, introduce. But the thing that I wanted to mention is that uh, obviously doing this campaign without an incentive to keep the tokens can be damaging and that's why the API staking campaign comes, uh, the API staking model comes in which will hopefully uh, you know, make this uh, more fluid and make this more simple. Partha, do you want to take this now? Yeah, I uh, can speak. I mean, as uh, we informed you guys, uh, I think a couple of meetings back, we uh, the APY staking is on our highest priority from a product perspective. So that's what we've been working on. Uh, I mean, a part of the team has been working on for quite a few weeks now. Uh, we did a manual dry run um, uh, last week uh, and uh, we had to revisit a couple of our assumptions and uh, fine-tune the model as per that. Uh, I have the contracts ready, which I'll be deploying on testnet uh, later today or early tomorrow. And then um, we test it out first on a testnet and then hopefully in a couple of weeks, we'll have uh, it deployed on mainnet. And uh, for a few weeks, we plan to uh, do a dry run on mainnet using our own funds. At that time, um, the product will not be open um, to the community as such. Once we are happy uh, that the things are working as it should um, on mainnet as well, then we plan to um, uh, make this available to everyone. Uh, anyone uh, with a pillar uh, token can um, join, can stake their tokens. So that's the plan. Uh, hopefully by end of, uh, I mean, next week, we might have something uh, um, as a proposal uh, which we'd introduce to the governors because we need the, the DAO approval for this. There are certain uh, agreements that we have to come with on how much Pillar DAO is willing to underwrite um, because there are certain uh, aspects to that. Uh, we, 
which would be detailed or explained in the proposal. Um, yeah, um, uh, hopefully it should be re ready before the next uh, community call. And then uh, we can uh, take this on uh, either the governor's channel or on uh, forum to discuss it further. Thanks, uh, Dennis. Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, just give, give me a second to check some things. Um, okay, now I see I see a lot of activity happening um, inside this this call. I hear, I see a lot of people. That's good to see always. So um, here I'm I'm giving everyone from the governor's house a chance to speak their minds. You know, we wanted to make an open discussion for the first time in some time. We haven't had that for a couple of months where we actually had an you know open discussion happening in real time. I think this is the most productive way that we can actually. Uh, share the ideas about proposals and ideas and how the governance process should be moving on. I know there has been, uh, you know, in the last couple of days, there, there has been uh, general negativity uh, about everything related to that. So we want to hear from you guys what you think about this and what we can do to change it. We have a couple of ongoing proposals right now that we need to discuss as well. Um, I'm hoping someone from the team comes, uh, comes in to help me out with this. Um, we have a couple of ongoing proposals right now. Yeah, the obvious, the obvious one would be, um, well, the airdrop campaign is going on um, currently, but there's also the airdrop for governors and the support for C chain, um, which the airdrop for, for governors has been uh, widely, you know, uh, talked about here from you guys, and um, I can I can understand that. And uh, does anyone from the team have anything to share about this, uh, about the proposal going on, and what anyone has anything to say about that? I mean, on the AVAX one, as we already said, uh, it's quite trivial to ha add support on either spot. But if uh, the community want uh, the chain to be available on the pillow wallet, then I suggest they go in for a vote and then we could formalize it on how we take it forward. Uh, as, as that's the most simple vote happening right now, I will guide you guys uh, later today. I'll just write a short explanation on how to make a proposal on a snapshot. If you guys uh, want me, I can do, do it myself, basically, it's not an issue. Um, as we have done before. So that's the easiest one to do. The other one is uh, we need to discuss this a bit further. We definitely need to um, guide you guys to see how we can make this possible. We can't just you know make it make a vote without any numbers right now. So that the second one needs to be discussed further and that's what we from the team hope to do uh, today and this week basically. So that's it from me. Um, there's also I want it. Yeah sure Jack, go can I can I just quickly add yeah. Uh, in Lisbon we've been actually We've met and and uh, got to know uh, people from Avalanche, and they've we've been in in discussion about adding it to the pillar wallet. And basically, what we've agreed that once they're back from their um, tour to to Europe, which should be probably this or next week, I will sit down and and discuss how this pretty trivial integration can be followed by much less trivial cross promotion and promoting pillar wallet um, among avalanche users and avalanche asset holders so um, i just wanted to make it clear that the best way to make it happen is to sync the integration with a strong marketing push and promoting not only the fact that we've integrated avax but also the fact that there is a now smart wallet supporting avax which I'm not sure, but probably is the first one. So that's 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 where we can potentially get the most value out of this proposal and out of this integration. And I'll be updating you as we go in, in those because I believe it's pretty key argument in getting this proposal done and making it a reality. I accidentally moved myself to the audience. Okay, um, so I know I know we need to talk about uh, the proposals right now, right? Um, and I'm here. Um, I'm op I'll open the stage for everyone from the governor's house if they want to ask anything or share anything. We're here. Uh, just raise your hand so I can invite you in. I don't want to invite everyone in in case someone doesn't want to speak. Uh, you know anything regarding that? So any one of you from the governor's house who might have a question or want to share their mind or want to do anything regarding that. Uh, you have the option to raise your hand, and I will see the request, and I will I will add you inside um, without much issue. So all those who wish to speak, just uh, do let me know, and I will add you inside the call.
Hey guys, can you hear me? Yeah, sounds good. Hi, it's Paz Hello? Yeah, 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 we can, we yeah, can, yeah, we can see you, we can hear you. Oh, okay, um, yeah, quick question. So with all these uh, updates and new partnerships with Avalanche, or is it Avalanche? And, you know, all these, uh, you know, social media and, you know, influencer marketing, what, what's the timeline that we should be expecting for all of this, imp, you know? For social media hires, uh, the timeline should be two, three weeks, maybe max. For okay. uh, for Avalanche, um, this is, let's say, I, I wouldn't give a timeline here because it's also like depending on uh, Avalanche schedules. We've been talking to BD people for now, business development people, and not really marketing people. So this is an initial stage. When it comes to Collabland, uh, Michael, do we... Do we can can we give any timeline here? Michael, you're on mute. Okay, I I can answer for Michael if he's having issues. Uh, uh, Collabland, we already are uh, engaging with them. We uh, as we said, we uh, officially in partnership with Collabland uh, had the demo at Liscon. And mm -hmm. uh, we are continuing to uh, work on the product with uh, additional integrations uh, there. And uh, over the next uh, couple of, uh, um, um, I mean, weeks, you'd see more uh, there. Uh, Michael, are you available now? Um, I see that you unmuted yourself. Okay. Uh, so yeah, uh, hope hopefully that answers your question. Um, so um, if you don't mind me asking, who are these uh, who are the influencers that we've selected? And I mean, like as far as, you know, their subscriber base and their user base, you know, is it a good amount or is it? I just posted two links in the questions channel. So the first one is Paul Barron, which has over 150K. And the second one is Professor Crypto, which is over 150K. Um, okay. These are two that we have finalized for for now, I can talk about them with, with let's say, piece one more from TikTok as we are looking to try uh, TikTok, but I'm yet to receive a signed agreement. So I'll I'll skip that until it's formalized and finalized. Okay. All right, thank you. Yeah, happy to hear some engagement. So uh, the stage is still... Oh, sorry, my mic must be muted. Uh, so the stage is still open for anyone, anyone who has any questions. I know there's a, well, yesterday we had a bit of a you know, discussion, uh, especially I've seen some rise of activity inside the governor's house and it has been, you know, um, and we ha you have talked about, uh, there is an ongoing proposal right now, yeah, uh, where you are basically asking for a governor airdrop. And I'm hoping anyone from the governor's house who has, um, practiced, uh, who wants to, you know, make that happen, uh, basically to speak their mind about this. JJ, I know you have uh, basically created this one, but I'm not seeing you raise your hand. Uh, do you perhaps want to share anything about it right now with the uh, rest of the governor's house and the team so we can perhaps discuss the proposal right now as we're going live? Or is that something that we should save for later on? Yeah, I see you. Just give me a second. You should be inside the house. You should be inside the stage any second now. I think you need to accept it somewhere. Ah, here we go. Uh, your mic is unmuted in case you didn't notice that one. So you just need to turn on your mic. No, it's okay. No, it's can okay. Can, yeah, yeah we can hear you, Jay. No, how are you? Yeah, I'm good, thank you, thank you. I haven't heard from you in a while, we haven't uh, talked sometimes. Yeah, so How are you doing? Well, it's because I want to give an idea uh, for the long-term holders, for the governors. You know that many leave, uh, but some stay and try to give their best as they can. I'm in Discord. I mean the community continue to hold to don't dump the token and stay strong. I know that have a, a couple of people that are like this. So the idea is to find something that show the governors that 
um, reward is loyalty because you know that the run start long time ago give some frustration around the utility of the token around many things we we know that is no easy but my idea is to show that this governance um, work and that long-term holders governors can receive something from this and start to going forward everybody and try to to spread the world until we really see a great partnership or influencer coming uh, and talk more about pillar but the idea is really to to show the governors that they that they are important for the community and i see that this possibility could help people to to be more patient to be more positive and understand that they are important for the project hey uh, jj uh, if i may add uh, i mean again i i hear you uh, i'm here speaking as a fellow token holder not as a part of uh, the team i have invested uh, my own funds during the ICO as well. So I, I bought the very first tokens that were sold as a part of the ICO. So whatever I say is only as a token holder and not as a part of the team. And given that, uh, now that I've had the disclaimer, uh, let me go about. So I, I perfectly hear, I understand where you're coming from. And I do agree that we have to um, encourage uh, token holders and long time holders, especially. Um, uh, and uh, it's been a, a really poor run from uh, uh, the price of the token perspective. So I, I do understand what you're saying. Uh, but uh, one thing where I like to disagree on what you say is that we all know that the value of the token right now is uh, very low. And if we were to distribute more of these tokens um, to uh, all long time holders, we would inadvertently be creating more sell pressure so my suggestion here i mean uh, what i was thinking here is probably uh, this is again for the dow to vote on if they think that we could do this uh, the pillar um, i mean our in-app uh, exchange uh, we are receiving some fees right we uh, the pillar dow owns uh, earns uh, part of the fee what i would suggest is for a part of the fee to be used to probably um, buy back uh, tokens, a portion of a token from uh, the long-term holders at say 10% premium than the market rate. This could be a one-off affair if uh, the community agrees, but ultimately what you're trying to achieve is for the token value to appreciate. Uh, it, it, does, uh, it really doesn't make sense that you hold more of what you already have and that eventually dilutes uh, the, the total value as such, right? Uh, this, is, this is purely a suggestion from me as a fellow token holder, not from the team. If, uh, the, uh, if everybody in the DAO agrees to this, this is something we could discuss further in the forums. Yeah, thanks. Thanks to suggest this uh, possibility. Um, in the proposal that I put, that I offer, was talking to, to to have the possibility to stack and not to sell the token. But maybe it's not the best uh, idea. I am just looking for something that is going to change the mood of the people uh, that are here since long time and that try to participate uh, in the community daily uh, and be here all the time. So uh, my proposal is no, or idea is maybe not the best, uh, but I suggest to, to, to froze the token to, for the people. Maybe why not to put in the stacking uh, uh, program that is coming for one year, so I don't know, it's, it's, it was an idea. The goal is just to, to, to show the community that they are important for the project, but certainly it can be possible to make it uh, better in time.
Does anybody else uh, among the governors have a view on that? Yeah, that's exactly what I wanted to ask. Um, yeah, I see. I see a crypto R is raising his hand, so I'm inviting you to speak right now. Uh, I think you need to accept it somehow. Um, when I invite you personally, here you go. Welcome aboard. Just be sure to unmute your microphone so we can hear you. Uh, hi, everybody. Yeah, hi, we can hear you. So it's my first time, uh, my first intervention. Now, I, I would like just to build on what Sparta has just said because I've proposed similar idea like, I mean, in the concept I would, uh, I would like to say, I mean, similar, uh, building a portal where every member of the community can see um, the volume and the fees that are being collected when users are using the app. I mean, this this idea that I've suggested, it's like, like I said many months ago, but we've never seen, I mean, you guys, the team, you, uh, um, yeah, it's, it's like the way where we can see the fees or the volume that has been transacted uh, through the app. I mean, in order for for the AD, for what uh, Porta have just said, uh, we need to see something similar. Yeah, I, and I then hear you. Go from there. Yeah, I hear you. I mean, the in app, uh, the fee collection for in app swaps started only probably four weeks back. Uh, we have, uh, I think, published the list of wallets where the fees are accrued. Uh, but uh, we could add this probably in a common dashboard where uh, the community or the governors can view how much has been collected. Uh, yeah, uh, that's something uh, we can get done. We'll add this to our product backlog and uh, we'll keep you updated as soon as it's available. Michael, do you want to? Add yeah, something to that. A question, really. Can we make this um, a token permission one so only governors can see it? So, other yeah. companies, if they want to see it, they have to become governors. Yeah, yeah. Uh, fair enough. It should be a governors only proposal. So, that, that's what uh, we uh, uh, The original link was posted on the governors only channel as well. So, yeah, it, it'll only be a governors. Uh, Is there anything you want to add to that, uh, Crypto Air? Uh, nothing else. Thanks. Okay, uh, happy to see some engagement from the community. It's been a while. Um, does anyone else want to speak? Um, uh, the stages are open basically for everyone inside the governor's house, so I'm going to you know, uh, give you the time. Um, in case no one uh, has anything else to add on top of this, um, we do have some questions from the community. Just give me a second. Um, we do have some questions from the community, so I guess we can cover them unless there is anything to talk about. Um, first, I'm going to ask the team, is there anything else we should discuss before we go to the questions or should we move on? Uh, yeah, I just wanted to give a quick rundown. Um, I'm not sure I did um, sort of address the community and I suppose most people saw that, but I'd just like to sort of um, give my first week's impressions uh, and, you know, open it up to the community a little bit. Um, yeah, it's going to be pretty short, but I just wanted to um, say where, are we at, where I'm at. Uh, um, at the moment, we really just like I'm gearing up um, and busy with strategy. Um, and that, I suppose, <laughs> it's kind of the boring part because um, you don't see any results, but we, it's very important part. So um, we're gearing up with that. Um, I see quite a bit of uh, opportunity um, aligning with NFT communities. And I suppose as Michael and um, Jack were talking about earlier, there's a... Uh, it's a really, it's a, everyone knows it's a really active space. And I mean, if you just join a couple of NFT Discord group servers, um, which I'm sure many of you are on, you'll see how, how sort of um, widespread that community is. So I, 
Um, I'm strategizing on a few ideas for um, trying to align and partner up with a couple of um, uh, the sort of more effective communities. Um, so that's one thing. Um, and at the moment, we're busy with the, um, the handover from Amazix or Amazix. Um, so that's like on the paid advertising front. So I'm working, um, you know, all of the sort of tagging of, um, of our landing pages and working with the advertising platforms and how they're tagged and, and sort of reviewing analytics on where we've come to so far and how we can improve that. Um, and the plan is, um, well, in fact, uh, the first step in my mind is to start optimizing those PPC strategies that are existing. So when I say PPC, it's a pay-per-click um, or the paid advertising strategies that are currently existing and um, trying to make them a bit better while we work on segmenting campaigns um, by user avatar categories, which I'm currently working on at the moment. Um, and I think, well, that is shown to be really powerful in terms of you can target um, the kinds of users that we want to um, adopt the wallet and to become uh, interactive users and, and governors in the community. Um, and then once once we've gotten to that point, uh, I'll begin. You know that goes hand in hand with building um, some some custom sales funnels uh, or conversion funnels. So basically, all of the ad uh, re responses to the ad get sent to these custom landing pages, which uh, control the environment. Um, not in a not in a controlling way, but more like um, allowing people to not get distracted from the call to action, which is to download the wallet and to become involved in the community. Because as I'm sure you all are aware, we live in this world where there's, we are faced with constant distraction. So, you know, even going onto a website, there's so many things to look at. And in order to get someone to do what what the call to action is, um, we need to streamline that process. So, so we're going to be looking into um, into optimizing those concurrently. Um, and yeah, I guess or that's just one aspect of it. You know, as Jack said, it's um, it's a very multi pronged approach that we have to take because there there are the things like influencers and um, well, you know, just sponsorships of uh, of communities where we feel we can have a, a growth partnership together um, as well as you know um, guerrilla marketing tactics like for when there are um, physical conferences um, that's a really good time to uh, step into some guerrilla marketing as in and guerrilla marketing, for those of you unaware, I'm sure most of you are aware of what it is, but um, it's just like sort of not that traditional kind of marketing, like on um, like billboards or anything like that, but uh, it's more interesting creative marketing where people are take a step back and go, wow, that's really cool. What, you know, what a cool way to approach it. So that's another part and um, yeah, there's lots to to uh, explore, and I look forward to um, the new roles of the content uh, content lead and um, social media because those those two roles will really uh, support a lot of these things that I want to do. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think as I said in the Discord. Uh, channel that um, it would be really amazing to get running from the very get-go and I know a lot of you want to see that um, but I hope you understand that uh, I'm sure you do it takes takes time to strategize and 
get our ducks in a row before we st go to the shooting range. Um, so yeah, that's all for me. If anyone has any responses, I'm happy to take questions. Thank you, Carl, for that. Um, we have been a bit a minute longer than we should have, but I'm going to say a few things before we go, uh, since you know I think I think this was an important call, so we have a lot to talk about. Uh, we first uh, before going to questions, which I'll explain why we are skipping. Um, I I know some of you have been waiting for the NFTs uh, secret word, so I'm going to share it with you right now. If you go back, if you go to the general channel. Uh, general channel inside the pillar discord uh, like the first one it's like a boom emoji uh, you'll find the site that says it, it's basically claim.pillar.fi and there you have to uh, use your real address basically to connect and um, use the word that you will use a secret word that basically allows you to claim the NFT the NFT is XDI network and you need to use the pillar wallet so no other wallet is compatible with this you need to use your pillar wallet in case you don't have a pillar wallet you need to download the pillar wallet but the nft claiming process is free of charge so you basically have a free wallet free wallet on next die and you have a free nft and the word you are looking for is multi-chain multi-chain as in you know multiple chains since that is something that pillar wallet does support uh multi-chain is the word uh combined you know nothing too difficult in case someone has any issues with actually you know uh claiming the nfts you can always ask us in support or inside the nfts channel on discord but i'm sure many of you Will not find any issues regarding that so in case there's any uh, problems with that um, in case there's a problem with that um, we can always address it later on after the call so again the word is multi-chain m-i-l-t-i-c-h-a-a -A. and uh, uh, my english spelling is horrible but i'm sure you understand what multi-chain is i'm sure you can spell it um, so yeah that's the word as regarding questions um, um, as I'm seeing this basically um, Aaron you're the only one who has some had some questions and those were regarding marketing and uh, I believe that Jack has basically covered all of those questions you might be having unless there is something else you want to discuss um, if you think that you need uh, you need something else cl clarified you can always raise your hand right now and ask the question and I'm sure Jack or someone else from the team will be happy to respond um, in real time you know just to give you an insight and in case you want to perhaps ask a question later or you think it hasn't been asked uh, you can ask inside the questions will be active uh, for the next five to ten minutes to answer any questions you might have uh, later on and that will be about it um, thank you for joining this week's governance call it has been a bit hectic uh, we know and I hope you still uh, I hope some of these announcements that we made have uh, relieved you a bit we have we will definitely be looking into the forum more uh, so the, the upcoming proposal perhaps that we're going to suggest to you is the C chain one if the community decides that uh, they want it done we can do it fast uh, the other proposals we'll still need to discuss further before we can go on to them but that's one of the first steps in governance you know just to get things moving um, thank you all for joining uh, I hope you uh, enjoy the free uh, NFTs that you will be receiving right now um, the code word is multi-chain so it's combined multi-chain um, but I'll, I'll just write it uh, for for just a second. I'll write for the next two or three minutes inside the general chat, and then I'll delete it again. So all of the only those who partic participate can claim the reward. So thank you all for joining. Uh, hope to see you two weeks from now, and um, we'll definitely be in the forums and in the Discord uh, and in the Telegram channels, being active and responding to you guys. We know that um, we have noticed that you are unsatisfied, and we'll do our best to keep the motivation up. So thank you and see you two weeks from now on our next governance call and until then, um, take care. Goodbye.